Good evening, and welcome to this digitally enabled online special meeting of council of the municipality of North Perth held on Wednesday, January 12th of 2022. I'm sorry, I have to get my right script up here. There we are, sorry. Uh, I'm at Councillor Alan Rothwell, Chair of the Budget Committee, and I'll call this meeting to order. I asked uh, Clerk Snell to note our starting time for the minutes is 7 p.m. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the Anishinaabe peoples. We wish to acknowledge and recognize the long history of Indigenous peoples in Canada and show our respect to them today. We recognize their stewardship of the land May we all live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship. Tonight's meeting is being streamed live on the Municipality of North Perth YouTube channel and will be available after the meeting as an archive video. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded and their voice, image and comments will form part of the live stream. The chair and or the clerk have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances where deemed necessary. Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. Thank you. Welcome to those joining us via the YouTube channel we welcome to councillors, staff, and delegations who will participate in this meeting. At this time, I invite your decorum over the course of the coming meeting. We do not have any attendance regrets uh, that uh, I am aware of here this evening. Let us move to uh, item three on our uh, agenda pertaining to pecuniary interest for the benefit of those unfamiliar uh, with uh, our council practices. Provincial legislation requires councillors with a potential pecuniary or financial interest in any item at the council table to declare this interest and to remove uh, themselves from discussions and voting on the item. In accordance with recommended protocol at this time, I will invite councillors with pecuniary interest, including those who have declared in writing, to verbally advise the chair in public session and to submit documentation to this effect in writing to the clerk. Councillors are further reminded that should a potential conflict arise during the meeting, they may also declare an act at any point in the meeting. Just looking at our chat function, I don't think we have any declarations here this evening. Thank you. To explain our virtual processes, I'll be trying to seek consent uh, from various councillors as movers and seconders of the various resolutions and bylaws that will be uh, brought before us tonight. I will do this alphabetically. Should a councillor not wish to respond to the request, they may say so and I will move on to the next name on the alphabetical list. Regarding speaking to our business, councillors tonight will identify themselves through our conferencing technologies chat function. The clerk is assisting me tonight in maintaining the speaking order from that source. Councillors are allowed on their turn to deliver a primary question or comment and may make one supplemental. We will follow speaking order carefully and any councillor wishing to have a second say will have to indicate again and go to the bottom of the uh, list. This is normal process consistent with Robert's Rules of Orders. Councillors are reminded that if I believe you are not audible, I will call on you. You don't need to ask if uh, you can be heard. I will let you know if we cannot hear you. Councillors are further asked to maintain a mute state in the web conference until I have called upon you for a verbal reaction. Should any of your votes not show up in eScribe, I will call on you when things seem stalled to register a manual vote. At that time, take yourself off mute, answer yes or no to the motion, then return to mute. Thank you. Regarding item four on our agenda, I have a motion before me for the adoption uh, of the uh, agenda here uh, this evening. And on the, the uh, just uh, turning to that uh, motion here now, I'll call on... Uh, Councillor Andreessen, would you be willing to uh, 
move the uh, uh, approval of the agenda for this evening. Yes, I'll make that motion and approve the agenda. Thank you. Uh, next, I'll call on Councillor Anstead. Would you be willing to second the motion? Yes, I would second that motion. Thank you. Uh, will uh, any discussion on that? I suspect not, but I uh, have to ask that question. Uh, we will call the question to the votes on eScribe. I'm in favor. I'm having some eScribe troubles. Okay, Councillor Duncan, th thank you. Oh, there we are. Good. I'll declare that uh, motion carried. The next motion I have uh, before me is uh, that the uh, minutes from the December 8th, 2021 North Perth Special uh, 2022 budget co uh, committee meeting be approved as amended. I'll take a motion from Councillor Barnes, please. Yes, I would move the consent agenda. Thank you. And Councillor Duncan, would you be willing to second? Yes, I'll second that. Uh, any discussion about that? If not, we'll call the question on the vote. There we are. I'll declare that uh, motion carried. Thank you. There we are. We have uh, no delegations uh, this evening. However, uh, we'll move to item uh, seven, which is our reports. Uh, now I'll invite uh, uh, members of council uh, to uh, turn to your uh, budget ebook. Uh, that uh, link was sent out to uh, all of us uh, by our staff uh, uh, on uh, this past Monday. So hopefully that uh, uh, we've got all that uh, material there. I'm just looking to make sure at our last uh, meeting on the uh, Capitol, we did have some challenges there, but I think uh, I'm not noting anyone that uh, has some challenges there. So without further ado, we'll call on staff. And again, I just uh, want to remind uh, councillors we're moving uh, forward in the uh, Capitol budget. We're having presentations uh, items 7.1 through uh, 7.4 from our staff. Uh, we will start out with the environmental services update from our manager of environmental services, Mark Hackett. Uh, so without uh, further ado, uh, uh, Mark, would you uh, please join us and uh, make your presentation, please? Sure. Thank you, Chair Rothwell and Council. Yes, I have a brief update from the presentation um, of my council at our capital items on uh, December 8th last year. Um, and it revolves around project number six, um, in the uh, budget binder um, for the wastewater treatment plant roof repairs. And um, it's on page 22 of the binder. Yep, that's close there. Um, yeah, so we have been looking for um, some assistance from a company, a roofing uh, supplier company to help us uh, figure out what all work needed to be done. And we'd been after them for a while and it was, it was actually over two months we'd been waiting to get some information from them and, and I didn't have it in time for my budget presentation back in December, but we have got it now and I've included a photo report for it. Um, uh, that starts on page 24, Chris, yeah, you're on it. Um, yeah, so I thought what I'd do, uh, we had originally budgeted $80,000 for this job. And once they look, once we got the report, we they said that they're expecting it to be closer to between 160,000 and, and um, $190,000. Uh, that's what the what they're expecting to get from a tender. This is not actually a price for the job. It's just what they're what they're estimating with the amount of work that needs to be done. So I thought I'd go through that, uh, show a bit of the extent of the work that needed to be done, and I thought I'd do that by just going through each of the photos. So photo one at the bottom of that page there shows the uh, administration roof um, 
then that's one of the areas that needs to have work done on it. Um, there are two HVAC units you can see there, the one in the farthest away in that picture. Uh, there's no work needed on that section of the roof. That's the newer, uh, the new addition that's been put on. Um, if you look at um, page, the next photo, page, uh, photo number two, that is the um, roof of the garage. And then we have photo three, which shows um, just some of the gas lines that are, have to, would have to be painted. There's another arrow there of uh, an expansion joint that would have to have the metal removed and some work done there and then have new 24 gauge metal installed. Um, on the next page, sorry, Chris, uh, photo number four uh, shows the HVAC unit that would have to be lifted um, and then a neoprene curb gasket would have to be installed there as well. Uh, then photo five shows some additional gas blocks and painting that would need to be done. And that's all to meet the TSSA standards uh, to remain in compliance. Photo um, six and seven show the uh, hatch area on the roof where you gain access to the roof. And there would need to be um, uh, some rubber walk pads, put down there and also some patio stones to create a path. Uh, up on top. Um, and then photos eight, nine, and 10 basically show some of the other work that needs to be done, which is to remove the siding there. And then there would have to be um, a membrane installed that would go part way up that wall, about 12 inches, and some other work that would need to be done. It all has to be removed and then put back on when the job was complete. And that goes around the entire circumference of the building, except that the front part, it would need to be done. But so that's basically it. Um, we're hoping that the, the budget, the tender, when it goes out, that we get a better price than what they're suggesting, but that's the, the number that they gave us. And uh, so I needed to amend that on that project sheet. So I could take any questions if there's any. Thank you very much, uh, Mark, for the uh, explanation. And you know what they say, a picture is worth uh thousand words or, or less in this case, but I uh, appreciate uh, that information. Just looking at the chat function, are there any questions from members of council, please? Could you just, uh, if you do, just uh, go onto our chat function, please? Not seeing any. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Matt, for the, uh, or Mark, for the presentation. I appreciate that. And council does as well, I'm sure. Uh, without further ado, we will uh, move then to uh, item uh, 7.2, which is our North Perth Fire Department and our Fire Chief, Jani Pape. Uh, Jani, could you just uh, confirm our page number that we're on? 85, I believe. Good, there we are. Thank you very much. You're welcome. DAO Snell is uh, quickly getting to that. Uh, I suspect members of council are as well as we zip along here a little bit. Just one moment here. I think I think we're set to go. Thank go you. ahead, Chief Pape. Thank you, Chair Rothwell. Good evening, Council. So just to begin um, with a brief capital overview, the North Perth Fire Department did receive um, delivery of three new fire apparatus in 2021. Unit 13, which is a tanker in our listable station, Unit 22, which is a pumper in the Atwood station, and Unit 32, which is a pumper in our Moncton station. For 2022, the North Perth Fire Department has identified one capital um, project. It's the installation of an electronic sign at the Listowel Fire Station. Due to um, ongoing restrictions uh, related to COVID, uh, we are very restricted in what we can do for public education. Um, we used to rely heavily on our schools um, for um, public education appearances, and, and it, we spent a great deal of time in our classrooms. We're unable to do that right now. And so um, what we are proposing is, is that um, a new sign be placed at the Listowel Fire Station. Um, we're seeing a lot more traffic uh, than we once did uh, when the fire uh, station was originally built. So there's a, it's a high traffic area now and um, looking to um, enhance our ability to engage with our public. Um, I do apologize on the uh, project detail sheet. There is an error. We're looking for um, a cost as, as we did uh, look for some quotations um, of $50,000. It's, it's a one year project. So that amount in the 2023 um, column there should not be there. It's, it's one uh, $50,000 project. 
Um, and just a reminder uh, that under the Fire Protection and Prevention Act, um, public education is a requirement, a legislated requirement of all uh, municipalities. Um, open to any questions you may have at this time. Thanks very much, uh, Chief Pape. Just looking for uh, any questions of council. Just while we're waiting, uh, uh, Chief Pape, the uh, the sign uh, that's proposed, uh, its location would be uh, in proximity to uh, the sign in front of the building. Is that correct now? What, what we're proposing is for the um, sign uh, that was installed when we constructed the station in 2010 for it to be removed, um, likely usable somewhere else in the municipality, uh, but we could use the existing base to put an electronic sign up. Um, right now, we're having some functional issues with it. Um, we have certain staff who do not fit. Um, underneath there when we have to lift it up. It no longer, the hydraulics uh, no longer keep it up. Um, so we have had someone pinched in there. Um, so it, we, we do, uh, there there are some uh, functional problems uh, starting there, but, um, and we do need to be changing it more frequently, but it's become a bit of a chore um, to get in there and get that done. Councillor Richardson, did you have a question? Oh, yes, thank you. I think you were on mute there for a moment, but uh, thank you for, for your report, uh, report Chief Pape. I'm just wondering that you just alluded to the fact that the it's going to be elect, an electronic animatronic type of signboard. Yes. Um, approximate dimensions. Do really, I don't or? have I don't have that information at home with me uh, tonight. Um, roughly the same dimensions as are there now. Um, okay from what uh, the supplier we spoke to, uh, we would have the ability to also include graphics as well as text. So be more eye catching um, and we'd be able to change it more frequently um, just because we could change it from a device inside of the fire hall. So it would be far easier to do that. Okay, and as long as it takes graphics, I'm assuming that also within that quotation, there would be the opportunity very similar to the chamber sign that's out front of the PUC building that the Obviously, the illumination value of the LEDs would go down significantly in the evening, so it's not uh, intrusive to the neighbors. Because I know yes, sometimes we... before that other one toggles off, it's pretty, it's like sunshine-ish driving down, uh, down the street until it actually dims down for the evening where we want to be uh, conducive to our neighbors. 100%. And we did ask about that at the time. It was It's the same supplier, as I understand, who did do the chamber sign. Um, because, yes, we do have some great neighbours on the opposite side of the street with us, and uh, we want to maintain that relationship. Wonderful. Thank you. That's all I have. I'm not seeing any other uh, members of council with questions. So uh, without further ado, thanks very much, Jenny, for your presentation. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item 7.3, uh, our uh, roads, bridges, stormwater, and drainage. Our manager of operation, Lyndon Couch. Uh, Lyndon, uh, you're welcome to take the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, members of Council, uh, good evening. Um, I'm going to walk through uh, quickly the capital overview, uh, talking a little bit about what's happened this year on main projects. Small ones with carryover and other minor items aren't included in this project list in the overview. Uh, so I'll, I'll just start right in and then we can go through the panels. Uh, project one is the master servicing plan, which evolved from our stormwater master plan. And as outlined here, uh, there's a budget coming up of uh, $279,000. Uh, the majority of the completion of the work that was started this year, uh, and it overviews sanitary storm and water modeling, uh, deficiencies, and makes recommendations on uh, capital programs for the future. So it's a full understanding of our assets. It's going to be an up update of our GIS system as well. So that was initiated last year, carrying forward. Project two, transportation master plan has been in front of council several times uh, and council has been involved in public meetings. Uh, it is carrying forward and going to be concluding shortly. Uh, there'll be an expansion of that work in an additional project that's gonna be mentioned later. I think it's project number 14 about the bypass uh, that's going to be a, a part of this work, but that is ongoing and it's listed here in front of you tonight. Um, project three, Atwood servicing upgrades. Uh, is taking, uh, we've done significant work with the MTO and we've had to uh, have several discussions 
uh, to explain what the program is to update water main uh, through the core of, of Atwood, um, as well as the installation of a water reservoir for fire uh, protection purposes, but also potential potable water uh, system enhancements in the future. So it's ongoing work and it's listed again for this coming year with water main possibly uh, being installed on the east side uh, with the coordination of the MTO uh, down the main street of Atwood. And that's the design work coming up this year is what's proposed for that project. It's fluid. We're meeting with the ministries and we're going to be talking to them about what exactly we're going to do and how broad that project is. And it may change, but I would bring updates through. This uh, simply place marks it and uh, lets you know that there'll be ongoing work and investigation and design coming up this year. Project four, Northeast Developing Lands, Northeast Master Plan was the start of this. Um, it's the Walton and Davidson pump station and the initiation of construction uh, through this year, which we're looking for and which is budgeted and in front of you. Um, uh, the project went through significant design works this year and tender preparation, uh, sorry, in 2021. 20, uh, and uh, we're moving into a build year with approvals from the ministry expected in the first half um, and tendering happening in the next two months. Uh, project six, reconstruction of road 140. Um, the only edit I have here, it's a familiar project and I wanted to mention it uh, would last potentially into 2023 uh, as well as uh, this year. So there's enough road left that there's probably two more years of work there. Uh, again, it's being led by Perth East for that uh, road base improvement and upgrade. Project seven, the Davidson Street Bridge is the priority project there. Uh, it is ready for tender right now and probably will go to tender in the next two weeks. Uh, with a closing likely by the end of February or early March, budgeted at two million dollars. Uh, other works were completed this year uh, on other bridges in the rural areas. This one is an urban change. It should fit in with traffic implications with other projects that we're doing. And uh, as I say, it's expected to start in early spring. Um, moving on to project 10, asphalt resurfacing is a detailed review. We were able to, in 2021, do a what is a digital assessment of road surfaces. So we were able to work with the asset management program and update the road conditions throughout the municipality. We've done a similar assessment on our gravel roads and this is the tentative schedule and costs uh, coming up for this coming year. Uh, it's a continuation of work from last year as we finish the portion of line 88 to Wallace View. And we're also proposing uh, a top coat asphalt on line 81 as well as reconstruction on another portion of line uh, 89 and it's listed there in the boxes. Those are our best estimates. We're hoping that tenders may see lower prices than what's presented in front of you for that program. Uh, project 11 is fleet purchases. Uh, several units did come in this year. We're still waiting for the tandem snowplow which was actually tendered out in 20, uh, end of 2019 into 20, uh, sorry, end of 2019 into 2020, yes, uh, with other um, other purchases that I'll outline as we go through the panels. Project 12 is engineering survey and design road projects. For uh, the priority here is, is Elm Street from Maine to Elizabeth. It has some sanitary uh, deficiencies that need to be repaired and in getting down to the sanitary and bringing that project back up to surface we'll be reconstructing the, the section of the road. This is a design proposal to send it out to our pre-qualified uh, consultants. Uh, to do design work and get it ready for tender for a subsequent uh, construction year. Similar is Elma Street, uh, final design uh, survey work and um, any assessments with boreholes could be done and we'll be uh, ready to construct in 2023 for Elma as well and it would be a part of the proposed budget. So what we're doing here is trying to prepare projects in advance. They would be funding ready and they would also be ready for uh, construction at any point uh, in the subsequent year. So we'd like to keep these uh, probably in front of council and add to this construction list throughout the municipality so that we have projects that are ready to go for subsequent years. And this is uh, the start of that type of planning. Uh, and that really concludes. Lyndon, I believe that you just went on mute there. Can you uh, just uh, go back? Uh to where okay. you were closing off things. Okay, sorry about that. Um, if you hear me now, uh, I'll get into more detail as we work through the panels if there's questions on those specific projects as we, as we work through them.
Just turning to uh, members of council, do you have questions for uh, Lyndon at this time? Or are we ready to just go through, uh, Lyndon, do you wanna uh, go through the, uh, okay, so uh, please proceed. Okay, thanks everyone. I'll, as I say, be brief on what the costings are and what the plan is for each item and, um, and then be able to field questions that could provide more detail. But starting with project number one, um, it's the master servicing plan. Really in my overview, I discussed what its goals are. We hope to see it concluded by the end of this year. And again, we're modeling the systems. We're trying to plan for future growth specifically by understanding where the capacities and the abilities of our storm sanitary and water systems are for growth uh, and for subdivision uh, development in the future. So that's the main target. It's gonna identify deficiencies in, and areas where we have capability of growth. So that's master servicing plan and the understanding of that servicing system throughout the municipality. It's budgeted at $279,000. It's the remainder of the fees that were already awarded to BM Ross last year. So we can move to the next panel. Um, transportation master plan, we've discussed that. Uh, just to get into the detail, council has asked for more information, not only to say that a bypass is required and identify options, but to probably drill down and uh, to designate a preferred option. So we'll be talking about that as an extension to the transportation master plan. Uh, it does not need a full EA process outside of the TMP, I'll call it, but it can be part of that. We need more public engagement to talk about alternative routes and bypass, and we need to address some more uh, costings on the specific routes. So we'll be able to do that as an extension of the TMP. And so that's what's coming. Um, it, the remainder of the work will bring final document and policy in front of us. So Atwood servicing upgrades is the next uh, next panel. I already spoke to that. We are talking at uh, Roma to the various ministries about the project and trying to get some momentum going in terms of understanding what the project is on the main street and, and getting some approvals in place in coordination with the MTO. Uh, the budget here this year is really to look at specific design on the main street uh, placing a water main along the easterly boundary, um, probably needing some easements and getting uh, getting farther away from the storm sewer on that street. If we put the water main in a specific location that's far enough away from the storm, the storm won't need to be reconstructed. We're trying to save costs for the municipality in terms of that location, and we're looking at that design. Again, this is all part of the Atwood servicing upgrades. No one has water service on the main street with the exception of some adjacent to Valence Street. And this would bring servicing along the entire corridor. And that's the goal of that design project. Project four, Northeast Developing Lands. I spoke about um, our tender preparations and design work. We are still working on uh, uh, some of the final tender items, uh, but hope to have that out in the next month to two months for construction uh, this summer and the start of uh, certainly the sanitary uh, pumping station as well as servicing specifically into uh, the Walton Street area and uh, along the uh, corridor of what will be the northern portion of Davidson that is going to be developed uh, as part of the program. So that's phase one. This one will be in front of us probably for several years as we continue to work our way north uh, in the project with, for the Northeast Master Plan. Line 84 reconstruction, there are holdbacks and some uh, deficiencies that might be experienced. So this is a minor item and we'll be finalizing that project. What you see is probably a complete project and this is a detail that needs to be addressed simply uh, for holdback items. Project six, uh, 140, we've discussed it. Uh, two more years of construction likely, 2022 and 2023. And what's agreed to with Perth East is the 250,000 per year for road-based development and then uh, reconstruction. Project six, uh, $2.7 million uh, total uh, for bridge and culvert work. Again, the, the priority job is gonna be the Davidson Street Bridge. Uh, just to give you a bit of background, we've been working on this and applied for a funding uh, application. We, we're not successful, uh, but the benefit of this project isn't only replacing the bridge, it's uh, enhancing our pedestrian movement through there. Uh, there isn't an adequate sidewalk on it that's maintainable. So we're going to widen the sidewalk. We're going to have sidewalk on both sides of the bridge. 
the bridge, bridge will be realigned with Davidson Street. Um, we're doing that in conjunction with the hospital lands. Um, and um, it'll be safer for traffic, especially at the pedestrian crossing at Queen Street at the north end. We'll probably be putting in a PXO up there. And uh, we'll be making it, as I said, a lot broader and a lot safer. Um, and uh, also providing a more accessible trail ac access, both to the east and the west for people that want to use the park space. So lots of enhancements and improvements, as well as the structure being replaced. Albert Storm Trunk is a carryover item. It's release of holdbacks um, and restorations coming up from that work, uh, which actually was a successful and on budget project from last year. Sidewalk reconstruction, uh, primarily uh, this is a repeat project and we will be continuing to, do, to add sidewalk sections throughout the municipality. Uh, Wallace from the fire hall uh, trail area heading on the, uh, what is the east side of Wallace? To, um, up to the existing sidewalk at the north end is going to be a larger project that we'll be coordinating with the development that's happening with the fourplexes in that corridor. So there'll be sidewalk on both sides and that's a target for this budget. Asphalt resurfacing, I, I've discussed it. The grid is, was in the uh, overview about the sections that we're targeting this year. Some of it is a continuation of work and this is ongoing infrastructure upgrades with our uh, road program, especially rural road program. And um, the listing, as I said, was in the overview and the, the budget hits right around the million dollar mark for this year. The only thing I'd add with that project is we want to coordinate with the county on some of their paving opportunities and hopefully to find some good prices for it. The next item is uh, uh, fleet purchases. They're outlined here. Um, a line painter trailer, uh, new grader. Uh, flail mower replacement has actually already happened so it can be removed from this budget but we'll see when we actually make that payment i'll talk to finance about it uh, the one ton truck it was a carryover from last year uh, there just weren't pieces available and prices were very high so we we carried it through hopefully there's more availability for these units this year uh, the budget uh, sits at five hundred nine thousand for this coming year Engineering survey and design, as I said, preparation for projects in the future. Uh, the, three, the two key ones are Elma listed uh, this year, and that would be the entire section right to Victoria, the new construction we did on Albert, right from the main intersection of Wallace. So upgrades there, as well as Elm Street with a sewer deficiency uh, running from Main Street up to Elizabeth. Uh, there are the targets. Binning Street is also listed here, although I don't know if we'll have the resources financially to move to it or the engineering services at this point but it would be uh, listed under 2023 in preparation for work there as well. A facility condition index is something that actually uh, we've been wanting to do as a department for the last three years. We're going to try and, um, right, we're going to secure a consultant that's going to look specifically at the structures we have, the three facilities, what are their deficiencies, the cost to repair, and also do a, a detailed assessment as to how much space we need for equipment that would be under a roof, as well as yard space for our materials and supplies. A priority here is to, to understand that we, we need to look at a long-term solution for salt storage. We currently use uh, the MTO facility. Uh, there is no agreement, uh, no long-term agreement and no security in the storage of that material there, although they've uh, offered it year after year to us. It is on a year-by-year -year basis and we'd like to secure another uh, option for that in case they were to make a change and they could make that at any point in any year. Beyond that, we need to look at what, how we house equipment, how we maintain equipment, and how we care for our stormwater, et cetera, and look probably for a more centralized facility um, and, and also see what the repair cost and the benefit of retaining any of our existing facilities are in the long run. So that's, that's facility inspection and facility review. Okay, the bypass design, um, as I said, in the TMP, uh, bypass options in draft format were already uh, presented in a, P, in a public information center. Uh, many councillors were there, um, and it was clear actually through the first wave of the capital review that council would like to see a specific option uh, recommended. And so that's, that's what the bypass design and review will do. Uh, we'll need our existing transportation consultant to give us uh, 
you know, some better direction and specific direction in the TMP as to what the options are for a bypass for all directions. But then also a, a bit of civil engineering input to look at the cost of each option and any barriers that would be there. There could be a large bridge, there could be a hydro transformer uh, station, uh, but to cost it out and then to come up with a recommendation based on uh, traffic flow and cost as to what the best alternative is. So council can have that in front of them this year as part of the transportation master plan. It would be discussed through public review and then uh, hopefully finalized in terms of something we can work towards uh, subsequently uh, for establishing uh, that bypass and starting construction on it. So that was uh, an additional item. Fleet AVL upgrades, this is in conjunction with all the uh, upper and lower tier municipalities in St. Mary's. Uh, we're all looking at AVL changes. Uh, right now we use a software provider that will track our vehicles and give location. Uh, there are more comprehensive packages out there. Uh, the county is looking at securing some of those uh, companies and some, uh, uh, some of the lower tiers have actually adopted uh, different technology. We're gonna review it and we're probably going to adapt our winter fleet in conjunction with the other municipalities this year to to have the new AVL on board. Um, it can do things like tell you when your plow is up and down, where your sander is running or not running, uh, and it added functions like that. So uh, it's ballpark budget right now. I'm hoping the 2000 per unit is uh, higher than what we will realize. Uh, it's going to be done in conjunction with the other municipalities and we hope to have that up and running for the winter period coming up in 2022, October, November. I think that concludes you know, the overview and the run through of the various projects and I could answer any questions that council has on any of them. Thank you very much uh, for the presentation, Lyndon. I'm just looking at our chat function. There's a uh, opportunity for uh, councillors and I see, or our mayor as the case may be, uh, Mayor Kaysenberg, go ahead. Oh, I'm a councillor too, councillor Rothwell. So, um, I just want, I took note of the uh, preservation of pavement for line 89 and uh, wanted to ask you about that because certainly um, the, one of the pavement preservation projects this year elicited a certain amount of constituent concern. Uh, they felt it was kind of soft and drifty and et cetera. And so I want to understand what methods we're using and whether we're going to face some criticism from the public for our actions on this one again. There was some comment in terms of uh, line 88 and we we milled it out and left it in a gravel format for paving this year line 89 um sorry are you seeing the shoulders were considered th there might have been complaints through the construction period about shoulder activities. no i'm sorry i think it was on the other side of of um of our community i think it was uh um road 158 or in, in that area okay. where pavement preservation happened in the early part of 2021, I believe. Right. You know, and I'll, I'll point out in the overview, there's pavement preservation, chip and seal, fiber mat. These are all technologies that preserve poor quality asphalt for, let's say, an additional five to 10 years maximum. They're not a full repave. We use the chip and seal on road 158, uh, correct? If you drive it in the winter, it had some uh, noise rideability and it did... Uh, it's an older technology, although they use new emulsion and new chips uh, on the road. It was very successful in sealing all of the infrastructure. Um, and that's its job really is to seal the, uh, the cracking and um, to preserve the road for a few years at a very low price. That's introduced again for line 89 on the bottom of that line, road 165 for, uh, all, all the way out to 178 um, as an option. We, we simply can't afford annually to do that much road repaving, which is um, doesn't only involve paving it, it involves widening it. As we go through these sections for reconstruction, like we did on 89 and 88 this year, we had increases in the width of asphalt of maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3 meters, and the shoulders by half a meter to three quarters of a meter. And, and that's extensive costs and work that are included in it. So we don't typically pave them unless they have a wide platform. But, but pavement preservation, uh, this municipality certainly has seen fiber mat, mat go down. It has preserved the life of 87. It isn't a good looking finish. And um, there is a wave to it, as you mentioned. But we, we think as staff and in review with the asset program that these methods are, are, are very helpful 
in extending the life before it gets resurfaced by a few years. So that's what we're proposing. Thank you. Just uh, moving forward, uh, Councillor Behrens, I, I note, I, I suspect you want to say something. I know you're having problems with your Wi-Fi. So Councillor Behrens? Uh, no, I'm not having a problem. Um, I didn't really want to say a comment. I am having trouble with my connection. Um, I believe it was 165 where a lot of us had a number of complaints about the preservation um, that was used on that road. And if that's what you're suggesting, I think it's just be prepared because um, a lot of people were not, I received a number of complaints, Lyndon, you know, I'm sure others did too. I don't know if there's a different product out there, but it, it doesn't make the country people very happy. I'll leave it at that. I, I would say that I, I received those calls too. Um, and actually, Councillor Behrens, you, you know, used another term for tar and chip, and it was uh, poor man's pavement. And, and it is true that historically it was used in the place of asphalt to try and create a, a hard surface uh, from a gravel road, and it fell apart quickly and didn't produce a, an excellent product as asphalt does. Uh, but these surfaces we're putting down need to run through the winter and get plowed and knock the tips literally off the chip. If you drive 165 and 158 today, it isn't nearly as noisy as it was when it first went down. And I think that's one of the complaints I had mainly was that and the amount of loose debris that remains on the road for weeks afterwards. But if that's the pain that we have to live through for the application. We can't sweep it off because it's still pounding itself together with traffic through that period and we can't sweep that stone off. It eventually sloughs off to the edges and creates part of the shoulder. So it's a messy application that needs to stay messy for two to three weeks. And if we can live through that pain and then let it run through a winter to get plowed, it'll get quieter. So if you drive them tomorrow, you'll see that they aren't nearly as noisy and that there's no residue around. And you, you'll see, well, if it, was a, if it was a good day, that it's, it's a pretty good finish. Certainly not the cracks and uh, the potential potholes starting to form that were there previously. But yep. I'll field those questions and staff will field those questions as we move forward on these roads. Thanks very much, uh, Lyndon. Uh, any other questions from council on uh, those 17 projects that uh, Lyndon moved forward with? If not, thank you very much, uh, Lyndon, for your presentation. There's a lot of uh, work and uh, effort required for that, obviously, yeah, with a lot of uh, uh, dollars associated with them as well, but uh, thanks very much for your presentation. Uh, we'll move to item 7.4, which is our facilities, and we'll call on our manager of facilities, uh, Jeff Newell. Jeff, go ahead, please. Uh, good evening, Chair Rothwell and members of Council. Um, what I have uh, presented in front of you is the capital overview for the facilities department. With regards to 2021, it was a joint effort between uh, the programs, the newly formed programs department and rec departments. Um, and so a large number of programs were accomplished with a few that were carryovers. Uh, notably, uh, some of the projects that were looked after were the Listwell Memorial Park Dam removal, the uh, lighting system on the two ball, system, uh, ball diamonds in, uh, at John Bell Park, uh, a phase of the fence that goes around the playground and pavilion structure in Listowel Memorial Park, um, the demolition of the Listowel Memorial Arena and the park development plan. Uh, two ice resurfacers were received. Uh, a furnace was installed at Elma Memorial Community Center. Two pickup trucks were purchased for fleet and equipment, uh, although those trucks uh, are, have not yet arrived, but will, are planned to arrive in February. Uh, resurfacing of the Moncton tennis court, and then both the Alma Logan and Wallace arenas had LED lighting uh, retrofit uh, pro projects done on them. Uh, there was... Uh, a project that was not required was the universal outdoor washroom at the Atwood rink, uh, checking with our building department. Uh, it is fine to have the, the washrooms um, 
or that facility doesn't require bathrooms and the proximity to the Elma Memorial Community Center, which provides washrooms uh, is sufficient. There's uh, moving into 2022, uh, the overview presents uh, um, pro capital projects that will take place in a number of different departments. So um, the first one is the recreation and parks projects. Um, and uh, what I'll do is I'll go through these and uh, certainly if there's any questions, uh, we, I, can, I can help out at, uh, at any point. Uh, the Wallace Community Center over top of the auditorium uh, or community room, we need to replace an HVAC unit on there. It's uh, beyond its life expectancy. Uh, line at line 84 in Highway 23, um, there is a property owner that is uh, looking to install a fence to keep livestock in along the trail. And part of the Line Fences Act is there is a cost sharing between the municipality and the property owner. Uh, we're anticipating that that project would move forward. We're looking at resurfacing the Davidson uh, tennis courts in Listowel. And the second portion of the fence, which would be to the west and uh, north of uh, the existing, or the, the, the fencing that went in last year, uh, we're looking to extend that. Many of our uh, playgrounds are getting to a point where some of their features or amenities are becoming tired and uh, we're looking to not install uh, new playground systems uh, but to upgrade ones that are currently in existence. Uh, the g to g trail has seen uh, increased usage um, in the last, uh, well since its inception and Moncton is the uh, middle point between Guelph and Godrich uh, and we're looking to develop a, a campsite and amenities for trail users uh, in Moncton in conjunction with the uh, pavilions that are there. Um, the Listwell Memorial Park Pavilion floor replacement, um, that is uh, an area that needs, the concrete is cracked uh, noticeably in that area and uh, is a safety issue. And from an accessibility standpoint, the pavilion is not great. Um, we did apply for funding for that through the Ontario Trillium uh, for $58,000. And unfortunately just found out today that we were not successful in that grant application. So that would come, uh, would be a, a capital expense that is not covered by a grant. The trail that is extending uh, north um, to Gowanstown, we're looking at uh, installing some parking there with the notion that the trail will be getting busier and a place for people to park their cars as a, as a trailhead location. Uh, Moncton Ballpark, uh, we're looking to do a lighting upgrade similar to what was done at the uh, John Bell Park this year, although uh, it would be, uh, it's only one ball diamond and a series of lights that is not the entire diamond that needs to be, the, sorry, the lights need to be replaced on the entire diamond, but as far as uprights, we don't need that many that we did at John Bell. Uh, we're looking to uh, re replace the floor in the kitchen at the Elma Memorial Community Center. We're also looking to develop uh, the Listowel, the former site of the Listowel Memorial Arena and develop that park there. There's a wayfinding sign project or process that has been underway for a couple of years in the municipality and we'd like to continue uh, those by putting signs in some of our parks as well as cemeteries. We won't, don't want to do all of them all at once but every year we want to uh, address a couple of the uh, locations um, so it's an extension of the wayfinding sign uh, project. Fleet and equipment purchases, we're looking at a uh, complex, uh, or sorry, Elma Logan Rec Complex is looking for a pickup truck. Uh, the one there is beyond its life expectancy. Um, we're looking for a zero turn uh, lawnmower for Listowel and a dump trailer for the Listowel Parks Department and an arena floor scrubber uh, for the Wallace Arena. Carryovers from this past year were the aquatic facility drawings for our outdoor uh, swimming pools, the Atwood Cenotaph refurbishment, uh, which is the 
the brick wall around the uh, cenotaph is also a carryover. We did receive a grant for the more North Perth Trail development. So as mentioned earlier, that is uh, in conjunction with the Gowanstown parking area that we're trying to create. Uh, so we did receive a grant for that and uh, we received the grant last year, but it's a carryover with uh, the work taking place this year coming up. And uh, Robert Mather's Park Pavilion, it did not get accomplished this year, so will be carried over into the new year. That's the rec and, and parks uh, projects that we have underway. We also have a project to replace uh, the driveways in the townhouse complex at Perth Meadows. Um, they're at a point now where they are cracked cracking, heaving, uh, and we're trying to make it safe for the residents of that, uh, that community. Um, we also have a project with the fire department to replace the roof of the Moncton training facility. Uh, in the cemetery, uh, between um, the yard, the work yard, and uh, an adjacent uh, residence community, we're looking to install a fence there for safety to stop people from getting into the uh, into the cemetery area. There's a couple of carryover projects with the with the library. One is the masonry uh, repairs of the Listwall uh, Library, which we've just run into problems with contractors and getting uh, bids on that. And then also we at uh, last year or probably the year before, there was a grant application for refurbishment and renovations of uh, the EMCC, um, which would be tied in with the library. And so further discussion needs to happen. The grant was not realized, but the notion that something needs to be done with that facility is still very much alive. Um, the attached project detail sheets provide further information. I've kind of gone into them a little bit as we've gone along, but it would certainly, if you want to go through them uh, and ask questions, I be willing to do that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, for your presentation. Uh, I'm looking now, I see uh, Councillor Seiler has a question. Go ahead, to Terry. Thank you, Chair Rothwell. Uh, yeah, Jeff, just getting back to the <clears throat> the Gownstown Trail there for the parking, I, I noticed that uh, the trail isn't going through there this year. Um, what's what's going to happen with that area out there? So there's a couple of things that are in play right now. The trail grant was received and we've started work on that trail in that there's been removal of tree lines that are, are growing over the property that we had uh, purchased from the adjacent farm, farm owner. Um, and the trail at this point will uh, run up to Gowanstown on an existing trail, new trail towards the south, towards Listowel. Uh, there's negotiations that are taking place with two different property owners to get access through out to line 87 at that point. We're hopeful that that will, uh, that will take place in the next uh, couple of months. We've tried it with the Snowmobile uh, Association as well. Um, with not much luck, uh, trying to get them access into the north end of Listowel as well. Um, the the screen that's showing right now is the parking area that we've talked about uh, just off of Highway 23 in Gowanstown. Um, so that's an overview of the property. It's it it is a park property currently, but there's no parking other than if you were to park along the side of the street. So we're looking to put some gravel in and build up that area where we could park probably five to six cars anyhow in there um, as an access point for that trail. Unfortunately, there isn't uh, the trail going through at this point other than we still have negotiations uh, trying, to, trying to secure that property. Great, thank you for your time. Yeah. Any other uh, questions from council, please? Not seeing any. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your presentation, uh, Jeff. Appreciate that. Lots of projects uh, in there that uh, have benefit to our community. So thanks very much, Jeff.
And just wanted wanted to add uh, the staffing complement of the uh, facilities department is changed and roles have been uh, clarified and are we're very optimistic that even though there's a large number of projects listed there that uh, there is a team of staff that would be able to address uh, those projects and hopefully see them all realized this year. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, so uh, moving forward to uh, item 7.5, so our combined capital budget, and I'm, uh, I mean, I'm looking for uh, uh, Francis Hale or uh, Becky Belfour. Uh, would you like to guide us through, through that? Uh, and again, this is the combined capital uh, budget. This is going to look at uh, our presentation that we had in December, as well as uh, here this evening. Uh, Fran or Becky, would you like to uh, move forward with that, please? Rothwell, um, so in front of you is the, the combined capital budget with the uh, additions to uh, each project that were mentioned, the wastewater treatment plant roof addition of another uh, 80,000 to make it 190,000. The listable bypass was originally 45,000, is now 90,000. And the fleet AVL upgrades um, are new, and that's 45,000. So a difference of 200,000 since last meeting on December the 8th. So that sits, we now sit at $16,768,219. Um, so that's pretty much it uh, that uh, to, to update, uh, the departments have done their presentations and that's where we sit with capital projects currently. Thank you, Becky. Members of council, do you have any other uh, questions uh, on the whole uh, combined capital budget? Seeing, uh, seeing none there, uh, item 7.6, this is our capital budget discussion. Now, are there specific uh, items where members of council feel that uh, we have items included or not included in our capital budget? So you'll see uh, uh, where things are. Uh, I'm not sure if we can pull up the uh, uh, graph uh, that we had had or table, I guess it was, uh, Becky, that showed us uh, where we were in terms of uh, over the last number of years with our uh, capital budget. But uh, would you like to give some comment on that first, uh, Becky? And then we'll turn it over to uh, ask members of council for questions. Go ahead, Becky. So we, um, we do have a bit of a decrease in where we are with the capital numbers. And I don't have that right in front of me here right at the moment. Um, but uh, we are at a bit of a decrease on the amount of capital project dollars compared to the last few years. Um, I believe we were at 19,000. Um, just give me two seconds here. waiting for my computer to load. This is where we need the uh, Jeopardy music to come on and sort of fill in <laughs> some time. Uh, maybe uh, Mayor Kaysenberg can give us some Jeopardy music. I'm not sure, but uh, just take your time. Let us know when you're ready there, Becky. So in uh, 2019, we had total project budgets of around 100 or uh, 18 million 194,000 in 2020 we had 20 million 741,000 in 221 we had 19 million 756,000 and this year we're at 16.5 so you know we were 18 20 19 now we're down to 16 so i know that was a bit of a concern for council previously of you know, the number of projects in, in the workload and uh, what all we were doing. Um, I think that this is doable this year, a little bit more doable. Um, staff has uh, a few carryovers, but um, 
overall, I think it was reduced somewhat. Um, new projects, we are down to about 9 million previous year. Um, that's not including the 200,000 that we just added. Um, previous year, we were at 13 million for new projects. And then in 2020, we were at 4 million. So we've kind of teeter tottered back and forth over the, the course of a few years. Thanks very much, uh, Becky. Uh, again, there's an ebb and flow with uh, these capital projects, uh, depending on uh, the extent and uh, the number and, and uh, so on. But uh, I think uh, longer term counselors have seen uh, seen that ebb and flow over, over time, as you've discussed uh, previously here. We can ensure that they is, uh, the yearly capital project comparison sheet goes into this document um, and can get circulated again to council um, for, uh, for, for the future for when this is passed. I believe that would be helpful and perhaps there's other members of council as well. Certainly Vice Chair Andreessen and I have had a conversation at budget and we did find it helpful to have that uh, conversation. So thanks uh, Becky and uh, Fran and the rest of the finance staff. Uh, Council, do you have uh, questions for uh, Becky with respect to the uh, 2022 combined uh, project budget? Um, Councillor Johnson, please. Thank you, Chair Rothwell. Um, question likely for Becky. Just, uh, Becky, why is there certain projects that have development charges? Is it when we charge development charges, or is that money set aside for certain departments and certain projects or how do we determine I see it looks like we're pulling uh, what is it 1.153 million out of development charges but is it when I just refresh my memory when we collect development charges are they set aside for specific projects at that time in your development in within your development projects bylaw there were projects that were um, mentioned or thought of for growth um, when we passed that in, I believe it was 2019. Uh, and this, these projects are deemed to be projects that are related to growth and portions of them for growth. So there's a bit of a calculation that we do. Some are 50%, some are a less uh, amount of percentage that can be drawn from development charges depending on what the project is and how it relates to growth. Thanks very much, Becky. Any other questions of council? Uh, Councillor Richardson, please. Thank you, and through you, Chair Rothwell, I just wanted to like to uh, commend staff for putting this together. I know it's uh, budget time is always an awful, awful lot of work. Um, and it's nice to see that we are spending a little less this year with the amount of uncertainty that we seem to have, uh, that I'm content with, and we do have a lot of carryovers. Um, I'm quite content with the workload and the uh, combined uh, capital project that we happen to have budget in front of us for this evening. So I just wanted to say kudos to the staff that I know this is a ton of work. Uh, good job for everyone. And we're actually spending a little less, but we're still getting stuff done and we're still moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Richardson and Councillor Johnson for those comments and questions. Uh, any other councillors wish to uh, or have a question? Seeing none, uh, council direction, item eight. Uh, we've been together uh, now going over uh, both the uh, capital budget as well as the operating uh, budget over the last uh, uh, few months. And uh, they seem like uh, the operating side has been uh, uh, sort of in the books, if you will, for, for some time. And uh, we haven't uh, uh, talked about it for a little bit, uh, but we will have a chance to uh, uh, have those conversations uh, now as we move uh, forward, but also uh, certainly at our uh, next scheduled uh, budget uh, meeting uh, on the 26th, I believe it is. Uh, just uh, 
we need some council direction here. Are there, and again, in discussions with uh, uh, Vice Chair Andreessen, uh, as well as uh, Becky and Fran and, and myself on the budget uh, uh, side, uh, are there directions that uh, council wants to give to staff with respect to the capital uh, projects that we've heard here this evening? As I, again, I'll just want to make sure that we've had the uh, uh, opportunity to have discussion if there's uh, items that uh, you feel are in there in capital uh, that uh, perhaps should not be or should be uh, increased as uh, again going back as we've talked about there was two items that uh, were discussed uh, at our last meeting uh, in December uh, and uh, Lennon Couch did uh, talk about with the uh, transportation master plan I think there was 45,000 if I'm not mistaken uh, that uh, was increased with respect to the budget. The other piece that was talked about uh, at uh, the budget committee in December was uh, to uh, look at uh, a budget amount on the affordable housing side. Uh, I know that uh, Becky and Fran were having conversation or had conversation with our CAO Chris Snell uh, regarding uh, an amount, and uh, frankly, at this point, uh, it's felt to be premature and uh, we'd be looking at uh, a further report. This goes back to our council meeting uh, last week in which we were talking about a, uh, a report coming from staff with respect to affordable attainable housing and uh, strategy moving forward. And at that time, uh, perhaps we'd be looking at uh, a budget amount, which uh, may uh, very well be after uh, our budget would be approved. So we'd be potentially looking at a budget amendment knowing full well that uh, it's... Uh, it would be too rushed to put together a uh, sort of a comprehensive uh, amount. I'm just, I'll turn things over to uh, Chris now just to make sure uh, our CAO slash clerk here this evening. And if, uh, is there something I have to do on my end, Chris, so that we don't have a problem here? Thanks. Thank you, Chair Rothwell. So I think that's correct. We would be looking at probably bringing something forward um, and again, as I think was discussed at council, I think there's some short-term um, options that probably don't cost us a lot of money and that we could probably even absorb in our, in our operating budget. And then we do have some longer-term um, solutions that will be more um, costly. And so we will likely bring back sort of the, hopefully we can implement the short-term with our current operating budget and we'll bring back some longer-term budget implications for some of the long-term solutions that make maybe a bit more costly for council. Very much, uh, CAO Snell. And uh, I just found that I had to take my uh, headphone off because we had a bit of a drag uh, between what I'm hearing in the council chambers and what's uh, coming out here. So anyways, uh, thanks very much, CAO Snell. I see a question from Councillor Barnes. Uh, go ahead, Julie, please. Uh, thanks, Chair Rothwell. And I normally uh, don't like doing this on what I'm about to suggest, but I'm going to suggest it anyway. We've had a number of small projects that we've talked about or potential, um, you know, whether it's a planning study or, or what it is. I'm wondering how comfortable um, Clerk Snell or Becky would be in, say, putting in a, a line um, that says potential special projects or something. So what I'm, I'm thinking, you know, and I, I have no idea what that number could be. It could be half a million. But we've got a number of irons in the fire, so to speak, and we don't know what may come along in 2022 to move any one of these forward. Right now, they're not really sitting as a budget line in any department's budget. But I'm just wondering, is it possible to to just put a line in there that we may draw on that if if there's a special project or two or three, it could be a couple of them. Um, I don't know how you feel about it or how Chair Rothwell or Vice Chair Andreessen feels, but I just feel like we've got a number of of irons in the fire that, you know, another month or two, I know we want to get the budget passed, but, you know, we might not know by June or whatever, 
if any of it's going to move forward or what we need to move some of these other little projects forward. So I'm just going to throw that out there and hopefully someone else has an opinion on it. So I'll turn first to, chair, uh, to CAO slash Clerk Snell uh, because I see he must have an idea because he's uh, gone to our, our table. And then depending on the uh, uh, response, uh, Becky, so we'll put you on uh, on deck, uh, Becky, but we'll start with CAO Snell, please. Thank you again, Chair Rothwell. I, I, I certainly understand where Councillor Barron is coming from, and certainly that's certainly an option. Um, it would be a, basically be a, a a project fund that we could draw from. I still would suspect we'd have need council approval before we draw from that fund, but we wouldn't necessarily have to do a budget amendment. So um, I would like to probably have some input from um, Director of Finance Hale to, to make sure she's comfortable with that. But it, I, I, it's something that we could certainly do. Um, and I would suggest we'd probably park it under administration um, for the short term. Uh, I said that we were going to have uh, Becky on deck, so we'll go to Becky, and then if Fran has any questions, I think Fran's uh, on here as well, but so we'll go to Becky first, please. And I would reiterate what, with Chris's wishes, we can put that into the admin portion as special projects. Under our new chart of accounts, we do have that uh, uh, strategic initiative special projects under operating. Anyways, this would fall under the capital for admin, so it sort of fits the, the, the new model anyways, just in the capital side. So uh, to me, that would, that would work. But again, uh, friend, I'd like friend's comments too. Um, I imagine that would all come out of segregated surplus unless it was on to do with growth or something like that, then it would be development charges and grants if we needed. Thanks very much, uh, Becky. So following your lead, uh, we'll call on uh, Francis Hill. Go ahead, please. Good evening. Um, I, I believe this is at council's discretion. Um, it, it, as Chris mentioned, um, the spend would be something that council would have to approve uh, regardless. So whether it's a, a motion to approve the spend or a motion to amend the budget, to me, it's very similar. And, um, but whatever council's comfortable with, um, I think Councillor Barron, Barron's idea would be that it's out there in front of the public. Um, and so that might be the way to go. But uh, either way to me would work. Um, and as Becky just mentioned too, um, it could be development charges, it could be financing, it could be surplus. It would depend on what project uh, <clears throat> we're working with it to um, some of the ideas have been land sale as well. So um, I, I really feel that this is at council's discretion. And um, the only advantage I see in Councillor Barron's suggestion is, and it's a very good one, is that it is out in front of the public then that the public's aware that uh, there is something coming, um, albeit that we really don't have a dollar value for it at this point in time. Thanks very much, uh, Francis and uh, and Becky and Chris. I think uh, we'll turn now to Councillor Andreessen, Vice Chair Andreessen, please. Yes, thank you through you, uh, Chair Rothwell. Um, I just want to thank um, uh, Councillor Behrens for bringing this idea forward. Um, I'd just like to share some of my thoughts on it. I, I actually think that <clears throat> this is a quite a good suggestion on many fronts that has already been um, shared around, you know, being transparent with the community. I think that's really important. And I have to agree that in terms of our strategic plan, we have a lot of uh, potential projects that are really, uh, you know, brewing, so to speak. As uh, this council's, you know, in our fourth year and we're kind of at that aspect where, we're starting to move forward with some of the projects that we wanted to, to see come to fruition. And a lot of that's kind of simmering. And so, you know, in terms of our strategic plan with transportation, with um, economic development, um, also even 
with um, affordable housing, there are many potential things that could be happening and having that line there would be very important. And uh, I, I agree that, you know, it could come from reserves, it could come from development charges. Um, yeah, I, th I think that it's, it's a, a really good way to, uh, to do some planning strategically from a financial perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor and Vice Chair Andreessen. Uh, so, uh, Council, I turn to you. Uh, uh, do we leave this uh, with staff to come forward uh, with uh, modifications? Just uh, looking at CAO Snell here uh, to make those uh, uh, any uh, required modifications. It certainly, from my understanding, uh, from both uh, uh, CAO Snell as well as uh, uh, Becky Belfour and Francis Hale uh, that uh, our uh, software is uh, and, and budgeting uh, new button lines uh, on the budget and so on is set up to address this issue uh, and there are some uh, matters set up both on the operating and capital side to address this issue it's just a matter of what those amounts could be is that uh, correct CEO Snell? Yes, that's more or less correct. Is that uh, um, we can track it, and I certainly, I, I certainly agree with Treasurer Hale. Um, it's a discretion of council for sure, and it's, and whether it's a fund put aside, which I think is, as mentioned, does show a little more transparency to the public, or whether it's a budget amendment later on, it still would probably require council approval. But we can certainly um, demonstrate or show to council in, in our final budget meeting what that looks like. Thank you very much, uh, CEO Snell. Uh, I see there's a couple other uh, uh, comments uh, here. Uh, Mayor Kaysenberg, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm, I'm grateful for the suggestion. I think it's a helpful one. Um, I, I think that we want to be clear that this fund actually is intended to come from segregated surplus and, uh, and uh, development charges in some cases, um, that it is essentially capital at this point, project or one-time funds. And uh, to me, this is reminiscent of what we really did this year, which was put money into the budget to deal with uh, COVID extraordinary expenses to the corporation. So I'm not uh, surprised or, or um, and in fact, more accurately, I'm, I'm pleased with the idea. I think it uh, does show our intent to lead in a couple of the projects that lie ahead of us, which uh, may not be fully um, in the, the public's eye at this point, but uh, soon enough, many of them will start to bear some fruit. Um, so I'm in favor. I think we should direct staff uh, to um, find uh, an approach to allocating uh, against the, um, the capital or projects budget, uh, a fund of a half a million dollars. That sounds about right to me. Uh just wondering as to whether or not uh, you'd like we could consider that as a motion now uh, and uh, then we can put that on the floor uh, and and I do want to respect I see that there's a couple of our uh, councillors uh, Councillor Richardson and Councillor Behrens with a supplemental uh, perhaps uh, could we uh, take that motion now and then I suspect uh, that these uh, two other matters uh, uh, of both Councillor Richardson and Councillor Barons could be addressed in in uh, with respect to the uh, matter. So the motion, uh, Mayor Todd, could you just make that uh, uh, again? I I note that uh, CEO Snell is uh, wearing two hats here this evening. I know that there's uh, <laughs> other support from Sarah, but if we could just uh, uh, the uh, I, I don't inherently want to steal the credit. I think uh, Councillor Behrens had, had the idea, but the intent is to direct staff to um, to add a line to the project's budget for uh, special projects and, and initiatives uh, of uh, an amounting to $500,000. So that would be a motion. Uh, I will turn to Councillor Behrens just to... Uh address the uh, suggestion here. Uh, Councillor Behrens, would you be willing to second that motion to put it on the floor and then we can discuss it, please? Okay, I will second it. 
but I guess the reason that I brought it up was I was really intending for all of the uh, department heads and the chair and vice chair to, you know, get together, discuss whether it's doable or not. Um, I did kind of ask for other opinions and thank you, Councillor Andreessen, for your opinion. Um, just, I don't know if council is okay with that or not. It's just that we all know that there's a number of little irons in the fire that may take uh, supplemental work to potentially move them forward. So it only seems fitting to me to have what I would call a special capital projects fund um, in the budget. Because we, we think that in some way, shape, or form, if we've got 10 little irons in the fire, five of them might move forward. So it, it makes sense to me, but I'll leave it at that. And I will move the motion. I think, so we'll take that as a second of the motion. Uh, count, uh, Mayor Todd uh, motioned. So we'll call for uh, uh, further uh Discussion on the motion, please. I, I'll I'll move to uh, Councillor Richardson, please. Thank you, and th through you again, Mr. Chair. I think it's a great idea that I we had, like it's been mentioned and quoted several times. We do have several irons in the fire that we we don't know what's going to happen. There could be a very tumultuous year with funding announcements and everything that I think we need to be prepared for. Um, I'm I'm willing to vote in favor of the motion um, to have staff get together and actually possibly I don't know if we want to corner it with an actual dollar figure tonight. I just wonder like to add that extra line in for that supplemental budget and to have staff and uh, budget chair and vice chair go through the numbers and to find out what would be an adequate number and what it actually looks like on the bottom line. Um, but the idea of putting something aside, I fully agree with that. I just not sure if we need to pigeonhole an actual dollar amount tonight. I do think that that was an arbitrary number that was put out. I agree with that number, but let's have the staff and everyone get their heads together to find out, is that viable? Is that too much? Maybe 250 is sufficient, uh, but have them come back at next budget meeting or a final by or a final item line in the um, next meeting that we come forward to. That's my only suggestion. Maybe take the number out, but I'm in, I'm in favor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Richardson. I uh, recognize Councillor Johnston. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair Rothwell. Um, I love the idea as well, and don't get me wrong. I think it's I think it's fabulous. I agree with what Matt said about whether is that the ideal number? Is that something that's doable? Um, I know there's lots of money to be spent out there. My question would also be: Is who is going to? Um, control the money is it just any department head can pull from that fund or will it be at the discretion of com coming back to council I really don't want to see something coming back to us every month or will it be up to the CAO or the finance people that that's just another question out there but I do um, truly think it's a great idea thank you Councillor Johnson I'm going to turn to CEO Snell for the a response please so before, as council is aware, before staff would move forward with any project, there would be a, re a report coming to council anyway. So uh, to me, it would be at council's discretion. So if we were to move forward on an affordable housing project, just for an example, there would be a report coming for council and um, we would just in that report under the financial implications um, state that we're, we're withdrawing those funds from that, from that special um, projects fund. So that's how I would see that unfolding. So it basically would require a report to council, but I, I can't imagine there's any sort of project moving forward that wouldn't have council's uh, approval um, and blessing uh, before it's initiated anyway. So I, 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 did, I don't see this as really necessarily adding an extra step, um, but it's just, I think as we've talked about making it transparent that there is um, some projects out there that we just don't have a maybe a 100% grasp on the total spend, but this does give us an allotment. And if council wishes about not uh, putting the number in, I think we'd certainly want to look at that and consider that it, uh, it would be up to the mover and seconder to see if that's a, a friendly amendment or not.
Thank you, CEO Snell. Uh, so on on that advice, I just uh, will turn to uh, Mayor Todd uh, as to whether or not uh, you would like to, to uh, consider a uh, sort of friendly amendment that that uh, the dollar figure of uh, half million that you had suggested uh, perhaps be uh, revised, if you wish. Uh, and then I'll turn to the seconder, uh, Councillor Behrens. Uh, Mayor Todd, go ahead. Sure, I'm open to that change. I think, you know, the, the premise is that uh, we need to, uh, by the time we conclude this budget, have an amount in the budget that is meaningful. And I think all councillors who've spoken so far agree that there's a need for meaningfulness in terms of, of having some project funding for special initiatives that are are uh, either in our bailiwick and, and emergent at this point or that are uh, or that will emerge as um, the next few months uh, climb forward. So I'm certainly agreeable to um, suggesting or changing the motion to the effect that staff bring forward a proposal of um, the purse size. Thanks very much, uh, Mayor Todd. Now to our seconder, uh, Councillor Behrens, would you be in favor of that? I suspect I know the answer based on your comments. I'm um, sure. I think it's an opportunity when it does come forward for staff to work out some of the details. Um, and I think the, it's just the concept right now that we need to be concerned with. And that's fine. The friendly amendment's fine. Thanks very much, uh, both uh, to our seconder, Councillor Behrens, and the uh, mover, Mayor Todd uh, Kaysenberg. Uh, so I'm looking, I'm not seeing any further comments. So we'll call the question uh, uh, with respect to the vote. So just, uh, we'll just wait for a moment till, uh, there it is, right away. Golly, that's great. where we need that music again. Oh, Councillor Seiler, could you please let us know how uh, how you vote there, Councillor Seiler, Terry? Yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in favor. Mine didn't come up. Thanks very much, Councillor Seiler. So with that, uh, I'll declare that uh, motion carried. Thank you very much, Council. Uh, so with that, uh, I think that is an item of direction uh, for Council. Is there any other... Uh, uh, direction which council which to give which to give at this time. Uh, if not, uh, we're going to move to uh, item number nine. And uh, just looking at my notes here. Council has a uh, mandated good practice acts near the end of its uh, meeting agenda to confirm all of its actions and business that is meeting through uh, what's called a confirmatory bylaw. And I do have a draft uh, bylaw here uh, before me, uh, which reads it as uh, follows, uh, that uh, the to confirm the generally previous actions of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth. And uh, I'll, we'll call on Councillor Johnston. Would you be willing to move that? Yes, I would move that. Thank you. And uh, Mayor Kaysenberger, would you be willing to second that motion? Yes, I second that. Uh, any uh, discussion on that? I suspect not. Uh, we will uh, call for the question then. Here comes the vote. I'm in favor. Mine didn't come up. Thank you, Councillor Seiler. I think, yes. So we'll declare that uh, um, motion carried uh, or the bylaw is adopted. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Council, for your uh, time here this evening. We're just uh, under an hour and a half uh, in. Uh, certainly, I thank Council for uh, the conversation and discussion. I want to thank our uh, Vice Chair, 
uh, Andreessen as well for uh, her involvement uh, and discussion. Uh, but in particular, I do want to thank our staff, uh, certainly uh, uh, with lead uh, both to uh, Becky Belfour and Francis Hale with respect to uh, our discussions uh, uh, in preparation for our meeting here this evening. And clearly to all our staff, uh, senior managers, as well as all of our staff that have uh, brought forward uh, information uh, for uh, consideration of the budget. Uh, as we all know, uh, these are challenging times and uh, the importance of uh, projects to our municipality for our residents are, are uh, crucial uh, moving forward. And uh, as we've said before, is that our budget is uh, one of the primary tools in which uh, we put into action the uh, strategic plan and the uh, issues and opportunities that we have before us uh, as a municipality. So without further ado, uh, I will call for a motion that uh, uh, the meeting be adjourned and I'll call on Deputy Mayor Kellum. Would you be willing to make that motion? <laughs> yes, uh, yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Deputy Mayor Kellum. I hope uh, you get your voice back or have a drink or something. Uh, and Councillor Richard, would we be uh, willing to uh, second that motion? Absolutely, I'll second that. Thank you. Well, that's great. That uh, is uh, uh, not going to be uh, able to be uh, uh, have any questions associated with that. So we'll call the question. Here we are. I'm in favor. Thank you, Councillor Seiler. I think, have we got everyone there? Deputy Mayor Kellum isn't showing up. Oh, Deputy Mayor Kellum, are you in favor? I'm in favor and I, it says just as, <clears throat> excuse me, vote in progress, but I'm in favor, thank you. Thanks very much, Deputy Mayor. I hope you're, uh, you're feeling better there. I'm sensing it in your voice, I suspect. Fact, it's it's true you're you're struggling perhaps a little bit so we hope uh, you get back to good health there uh, without further ado then we I declare that the uh, meeting is adjourned uh, now uh, council please uh, uh, know that uh, we do have uh, our upcoming uh, council uh, meeting here uh, next or on uh, Monday no actually it's going to be Monday the 24th of January uh, 2022 and that our uh, next budget committee uh, will be Wednesday January the 26th uh, of 2022 so I bid uh, everyone uh, here uh, adieu and uh, declare this meeting adjourned thank you very much